Hello and welcome down onto the tech desk. And in today's video, I've got something very special for you today. It's these, a very special pair of Joy-Cons. So after my last video, Nixie sent me these to show off to you because these are brand new and there's a hell of a lot of features with this and there's some really, really special things going on with these Joy-Cons, which we're gonna talk about in this video. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna crack straight on, but I'm gonna be talking about the box first because I think it's well worth mentioning. So when I've had Nixie stuff in the past, yeah, the box has been okay. You open it up, you get a plastic with the two Joy-Cons in, perfect. This, they've really upped their game on this. I think it's well worth talking about. It's a really nice, good quality, solid box. Nice picture on the front, spin it over, nice picture of it on the back with all of the features, which we'll be talking about in the video. It's really worth a look. And then when you open it up, you obviously get the Joy-Cons. They come in this bag. You get this um, middle part for when you want to use it as a controller, which we'll talk about in a bit. I'll leave that there. And then under this back bit here, you're getting some spare rings, okay? So you're gonna get four rings, you're gonna get two octagonal and two circular. Um, and I'll talk about that later as well. And then you also get yourself uh, a USB type C cable. This, yeah, meh, I don't really use them because I've got one plugged in over there, so I'll save this for Sunday best. And then you also get yourself um, an instruction book with on how to use everything uh, for the joy because there's a lot going on, but which I'll talk about through the video. Okay, so that's the box out of the way. What I'm gonna do now is just talk about when you get it out of the box and how it kind of feel, the first look and feel. And as you can see, they're huge, okay? The there's no getting around it. They are massive. They are much bigger. So these are the, the ones I, I last looked at. These are the actual Athena, the more white ones. And if I kind of hold it up there, you can see how much bigger it is than that. And then if I spin it over, okay, roughly the same kind of width, but it's the width on it with this extra bit here that makes them so big. Um, it's probably a good time now if I just talk about the, the weight of them. So if I grab my scales and I'm just gonna weigh them. So on their own, just with these two, you're looking at 225 grams. Put that into perspective, we have an official controller, it's 248. So if I add those two and the middle piece, 248. So these are the same weight as an official Pro Controller. And then while we've got this bit out, this is your, your center piece and you can snap it on there, and snap it on there and you can be using it as a controller. This is a brilliant controller. This just feels big enough to be a controller. And that's what I was thinking about when I when I got these Joy-Cons. Using them on the Switch is great, but it's kind of like a controller. This, these Joy-Cons feel like it should be a controller that has the added benefit of being able to split and being able to put onto the Switch as Joy-Cons. So like you're buying this for it to be a controller, uh, and then as the added benefit, pop them onto your Nintendo Switch. So in terms of comfort then, super comfortable, nice and comfy in the hand. All the buttons, easily accessible. So if I talk about the buttons then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'll go through the left one first. So we obviously have your thumbstick there, which I'm gonna be talking about in a bit. Uh, the D-pad, turbo button, profile button, screenshot, minus, and we have two indicators there. That's for the turbo and that's for the, uh, the profile mapping, the button mapping. Um, we have L and ZL there. And then if we spin it over, we have what they've named as FL, which is a like a trigger button. And on the top then we have uh, SL and SR. And they're on the right hand one, a very similar turbo, your thumbstick, uh, A, B, X and Y, plus home profile. And then again, the uh, turbo R LED and the profile LED, SL, S and R. And then we have FR, which is the button on there. If we spin it over, you have USB type C connection there and there, so they can be charged individually, or if you plug it in there, which I'll talk about in a bit, it can be charged off of the switch. All right, I'm going to talk about the buttons now and how they feel and how they press. So let's start off with the D-pad. This is an interesting one. The D-pad here, there's hardly any movement. Now I completely get that D-pads are a personal preference and I, I didn't have a problem with this, but look how much I'm pressing that, okay? hardly any movement at all it's almost instant i mean looking at it it's i mean it's not even a millimeter i'd, I'd say about a millimeter's worth of movement there pressing it and that's with all of them it's a it's a gentle tap there there's there's a little bit of feedback to it and a little bit of a click to it but 
there's hardly any movement at all with this and it's nice and solid as well there's not much movement as well I've had much more far more expensive controllers where the d-pad moves far too much this isn't too bad never had a really had a problem playing with the games on this uh, the profile buttons and the screenshot buttons are just kind of a, your average clicky buttons I can't I haven't really got an opinion on these they're just clicky buttons fantastic and as similarly with a turbo button now L and ZL, these are very interesting as well. These are almost like the D-pad instant. Okay, so let's have a look, ready? Look at that, hardly any movement at all. So they're obviously digital. Like click, 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 hardly any movement whatsoever on these. And then spinning over, we've got the FL here. So I'm gonna quick briefly talk about this. This is okay. I do like having um, extra buttons on the back here. I think they're excellent. But if I can just show you, it's a bit far this way. It could have been doing with a bit further around there because when you're holding it like that, I was clicking it with this part of my finger here when I was playing with it. It wasn't the tip of my finger. It was kind of here and I was having to squeeze my finger onto there. It's okay. It's not bad, but I think it would have been better if it had been a bit further round in there. But that's not really a biggie. Um, for me when playing with it I could still use it no problems whatsoever and then spinning over to the right one so these are all the same turbos are all the same uh, thumbsticks we'll talk about again in a second uh, these are exactly the same so almost instant look at that and then that's exactly the same uh, these buttons here they feel good so let me show you just to show them, hardly any movement on them and again hardly any press on them There's no real feedback to them. It's just a press and then it's kind of feel it. As soon as you press it down, you can feel it. And then as you can see there, they light up. So the A, B, X and Y, they all light up, which is a nice little feature. If I could just knock the lights off. There we go. If you want to, you can turn the lights off if you don't want them on. Uh, assuming it would drain the battery a little bit more. I haven't noticed any battery drain on them at all. And then speaking of battery, these will take, they say they take about three hours to charge up and you're gonna get around eight hours gameplay. If I'm honest, I just kind of have my switch on charge most of the time, so I never really ever went flat, really. So I can't, I haven't really tested it, but I've never run out of power. So let's talk about the power then. Um, let's fire it up. So you wanna know if it wakes up the switch. Let's press that, yes it does, okay. There we go, we've woken the switch up. And if we go into uh, our controllers here, there we have that. So we're gonna be charging them up here. If I grab my charging cable, if I poke it into that one, you'll see that, that one lights up. Similarly with this one, poke it in there. That one lights up. And then if you wanna charge the lock, which is kind of like what I do when I have it on my dock or just by the side of the bed, it's charging up the switch and both of those Joy-Cons as well. So as you can tell, I, I have never had an issue with the battery because it's just always charging off the switch. Now what we're gonna do is just gonna spend a couple of minutes talking about the thumbsticks because these are probably its highlight feature, okay? So these joint thumbsticks are Hall Effect thumbsticks, which basically means they're not gonna drift, okay? Time will tell with these, but essentially they don't drift. So let's take this one off. Uh, what you do, you see this ring around here. There's a ring with kind of two lines on it. That's just so you can get a bit of grip. You can turn that anti-clockwise, um, to about 10 o'clock and then they come off, right? So it's a little bit hard. You can't really take the ring off. So you have to grab the thumbstick itself and pull it off. So you pull the, both of them off at the same time. So there we go. If you have a replacement thumbstick, it's a regular thumbstick. So any thumbstick you like, you can put onto this one if you want to. And then you have your circular ring that you can put onto here. And there we go. There's the Hall effect in there. Exactly the same with these ones. So we've got the ring, I've got the octagonal one here. So you can get two octagonal, you can put the two octagonal on there if you want to, or the two circular ones. I just have two circular ones. I've never really uh, used the octagonal ones, but you can if you want to. I'll leave it on there just to show you. And again, just a turn anti-clockwise and then pull it off. So again, you can use whichever thumbstick you want. Swap it if you've got any other thumbsticks from any other projects you've ever had. You can use them if you want to. And there's the octagonal piece. And 
hold effect and stick it in there. Okay, so into the box, let's just go and grab a one of the, let's just go and grab a circular one, the octagonals back in the bag. Right, so this is how I have it. This is how I have the two circular ones. So put them on there, uh, this bit at the top, poke it in like so. Make sure the thumbstick goes on, like so, in, and lock it in. And there we have it in. Same with this one. Thumbstick in there on the top. Make sure we have the thumbstick in the correct place. Put the thumbstick in, so that's in. Ring on the top, and then lock it in, locked in. So now you're gonna to wanna to know what these thumbsticks are like. They're fantastic. as you can probably imagine. I can't really compare it to many others because they're not Hall Effect. The only other Hall Effect um, controller I have is the 8-Bit Do Ultimate. And yeah, it, it feels very similar. It's a very nice feeling thumbstick. Don't think you'll have any issues with it. And then it completely eliminates the need to ask about drift because supposedly Hall Effects will eliminate drift. So there will be no drift at all. I'm gonna go into the software in a second just to talk about it as well just before. So let's snap these on. So if we go over some of the features this has as well. So we've talked about the, this profile button here. This sets what the back button will be. Um, that can be any of the face buttons if you want it to be. And there's also turbo down here. When profile is activated, this will turn blue. So if I just turn this to be that, it remains blue once you've got it active. And then you hold down profile to turn it off and it will go back to white. There we go. So we've turned the color like the profile off. So we and it's not set to anything. And then with turbo, you have two different types of turbo. You have the kind of manual turbo, so to speak, and the burst turbo. So the manual turbo would be, if I was on A, I would hold down A and it would rapidly fire A whilst I was holding it down. Let go, turbo stops. Or you can have it where you don't press A, it just does it for you. So you just leave the switch and it will just continue press A. Um, also, sorry, with the back buttons as well, you can have macro as well. So you can have 21 button presses combined to this as well. So you can have 21 button presses, hold that down, it will play out those 21 presses for you by just pressing this. Um, also has adjustable vibration, so you can adjust the vibration up and down. Um, it's not HD rumble, but it's good enough. Okay, so uh, with most of the joy, in fact, every single Joy-Con and controller I've ever looked at, it doesn't have HD rumble, but this one, it, it's good enough. And as we've talked about before, you can change the lights on and off if that's what you want to do. And also no NFC, so you won't be able to use your Amiibos with these. And also being so large, you're not going to be able to use your kickstand. It's just, it just doesn't work. The only way you're going to do it is having it right out there like that. Like that. <sighs> not the greatest of angle, if I'm honest, but you know, so your kickstand's out of play if you're going to be using this and you want it on tabletop, you're going to need to take in these off and using them as a controller. And also as well, it also has the gyro as well, so you won't be missing out in that department either. So a bunch of features there. Uh, the macro turbo, uh, the back buttons, loads. Let's talk about the thumbsticks a little bit more. So let's go into the thumbsticks and we'll show you this. So I've got videos on my last one. They wanted me to go to a lot, a lot slower on this uh, just to show you what the kind of like the dead zones are like. If you're having the octagonal one, it's obviously going to stop and start. But if I do the circle one, it sticks ever so slightly, but not too bad. Okay. So out to the maximum, and then we've got another millimeter or two at the end. Uh, go to, to, to the right one. Okay, I hope that was good enough for you. Just do let me know if you want me to do any tests. But as you can imagine, this is 
lovely to play on. The Hall Effect Joy-Cons are superb, and it's gonna be a highlight feature, certainly for this, for the Joy-Cons, because I don't know many Joy-Cons, if any, that have um, that have this on them. So something that you may want to consider if you're thinking about picking these up, because the Hall Effect Joy-Cons, all of the features are really nice, I think, but you've got to consider the size of this thing, okay? It is big. If I flip this over here, look at this. It is absolutely enormous. In fact, so much so, it doesn't actually fit in any of my cases that I've tried, okay? And also, because it's a bit big, there's a little bit of flex in it. Can you see that? You're gonna get a bit of flexing with it because it is just so big. This is the Nixie case that fits the, um, their kind of like their lovely Joy-Cons. If I just show you, look, you're a good, centimeter or so outside you can squeeze it in and it does zip up there we go we're in but look at it bulging wouldn't suggest this at all so I'm thinking they might design a new case to fit it but as it stands at the moment None of my cases will fit this one. So that's a consideration if you are thinking about picking this one up. It's a whopper. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I think this is absolutely nailed on the money to be a controller alternative, which has the added benefit, if you need it to, to be on the Switch as Joy-Cons. And then very briefly then, if I just talk to you, this can be used for the OLED or for the regular switch or the light because you can use it off of the switch, okay? So it can, can connect to the switch. Like so. Um, and if I just quickly ping this onto here. It can dock because there's no protruding bits on there. So you can see there's a bit of a gap anyway. This is a regular dock and an OLED, but it also fits on the OLED dock as well. But with this, you're gonna lose one of your USB. So I don't think you're gonna be any, put anything in the top USB, but you should be okay for this one. Put anything in there for, the, for it to be charging there. So you're gonna lose one of your USBs. So there we have it then. This is, that was my look at this, the Nixie Wizard uh, wireless controller for the NS Lite and OLED. This has got a lot going for it. The Hall effect, the features, the look, it is absolutely superb. Um, go and have a look down the links. I'll leave links down below and I will have a discount because I've had a discount from Nixie before, so I'll make sure I get one for, for this as well. I think that's throughout their website. Uh, so go and have a look down in the links below. Please do like, please subscribe. If you've got any questions about it, do let me know. And until the next video, bye-bye.